After we trapped a Maxalk's reinforced battle group outside the galaxy, then faked evidence that battle group had gone through the wormhole to Earth as planned, I pumped up the crew with a stirring statement of let's go kick some ass. Their cheers died down more quickly than I had hoped. The problem was not the content of my speech. It was the reality of our situation. We were cut off from Earth. The Maxolks would soon realize their battle group had gone missing on the way to our home world, and there was nothing we could do about it. In the past, we always had at least some faint hope that we could save the world yet again. This time, that simply was not possible, and we all knew it. Even me, the eternal optimist, admitted that our mission was no longer about saving Earth. So while kicking ass sounded great, it wasn't going to fix the problem, because the problem didn't have a fix. Also, it was too soon. No rousing speech from me or anyone else could lift morale aboard our two ships. It was too soon after we lost most of our crew in the incident we were calling Armageddon. The correction, I lost most of the crew. Me. The commander. It happened on my watch. Ultimately, all those deaths were my responsibility. So when the muted cheers died down and people looked at each other silently asking themselves, WTF do we do now, I excused myself from the bridge. Physically, I was going to the galley to get coffee. Really, I needed to be alone. Reed followed me out of the bridge, waving for someone else to take over as duty officer. As we were waiting for the Dutchman's jump drive capacitors to recharge, the Valkyrie wasn't going anywhere, and there wasn't much for a duty officer to do. Sir, she called me. Do you have a moment? Sure, Fireball. I tilted my head to let her know I used a call sign affectionately. Before you ask for permission to speak freely, the answer is yes, always speak freely. Consider that a standing order. Then I had an unpleasant thought. I... Unless you're testifying to a congressional committee. It was her turn to tilt her head. Colonel, if I am testifying to Congress, again, I will stick to the written remarks the Air Force approves for me. We were all sick of being questioned by the military, by White House advisors, by Congress, by the UN, and by anyone else who felt they needed to express their outrage and concern. The questioning after we returned from our renegade mission was annoying, but... Considering that I had just delivered the wholly unexpected news that Earth was safe for several hundred years, it was not overly unfriendly. The investigations after the president authorized a nuclear strike against Dayton, Ohio, were mixed. Some of the investigators were pissed that Earth was in fact not safe and blamed me for some reason. But to my surprise, the majority of the questioning about the Dayton incident had been very friendly to all the merry band of pirates. Part of the friendly reception was because my new sort of friend Brock Steele had used his connections to put in a good word for me and my crew, so I owed him for that. That's good advice. What is it? Sir, that was a good speech. About no more sneaking around and kicking ass out there. The way she spoke, she wasn't giving me a compliment. I... Uh, thank you? Like I said, good speech... Is there a plan, sir? Well, my mouth twisted the way it did when my mother caught me in a lie. Flying around the galaxy, randomly blowing up shit is not a plan. Crap. Maybe my officers felt too free to speak. Damn it. I am a colonel. Even the army acknowledges that now, and... No, that was bullshit. I needed to hear the truth whether I liked it or not. Agreed, I responded. Go on. Colonel, you're not the only pirate who is sick of sneaking around out here. I would love to take the fight to the Maxolks directly. But the timing isn't right. That battle group we trapped outside the galaxy wasn't due to return for just under 15 months. She quoted the number Skippy had pulled from the battle group's orders. The 15 months included traveling to the Earth end of Gateway, spending several months investigating the behavior of that wormhole, and the return flight plus swinging past Earth on the return flight to check on the status of our unimportant little world. That gives us fifteen months, possibly longer, before the kiddies declare the battle group overdue. Fifteen months to do something useful, whatever that is. But if we stir things up out here, and the kiddies realize humans have one of their ships, they could send another battle group, or a whole lot more than a battle group, a lot sooner. I hear you, Reed. I hope so, sir. 
If you have a plan, do you mind sharing it? She knew that all too often I kept plans secret between me and Skippy until I was forced to include other people. Reed, when I said kick some ass, I was expressing a sentiment, not a plan. However we hit the Max Olks, or I waved a hand vaguely and what I realized too late was not a confidence-inspiring gesture. Whoever we hit, we will do it in a way that helps Earth's prospects for survival, and yeah... I know that having this badass warship, I wrap my knuckles on a bulkhead, comes with a strong temptation to use it, whether that is a good strategy or not. You are also aware that you are feeling pissed off and guilty about the people we lost? I stared at her. It was almost a glare, except I couldn't be angry when she was trying to help, trying to do her job, a job she didn't want. Psychoanalyzing your Captain Reed? Doing my job, sir. She wasn't given an inch. In fact, she leaned forward slightly. I am your executive officer for the moment, plus the chief pilot. The emotional state of our commander is my concern. It affects your judgment. Don't worry, Reed. I'm not going to take us into combat just because I want revenge for the... I choked up and needed to turn away and swallow. The people we lost. Or because I'm feeling guilty. You're sure about that? Yes. I bobbed my chin up and down deliberately. Because if I did, Gunny Adams would be disappointed in me. Reed's eyebrows lifted slightly. She didn't need to say anything about me and our gunnery sergeant. What are your orders, Colonel? Soon as Nagatha finishes topping off the Dutchman's capacitors, we're going back to Avalon. Avalon? Her eyebrows shot up more than slightly that time. We need more pilots, and to replenish the star team. Plus, we need food and other supplies. In case our return to a beta site was delayed, the UN had wisely provided nearly two years of food for the survey team. Since we couldn't go back to Earth... Avalon was the only place we could replenish our dwindling stock of consumables. Chang will be taking the Dutchman as captain. I'll bring Sims aboard Valkyrie as my XO, so you won't have to wear two hats for much longer. We didn't leave any stars on Avalon, she reminded me. Most of the pilots we left there aren't checked out to fly anything other than V-22s and Kristang dropships. Training up the pilots will be your job, Reed, I stated, provoking an entirely understandable groan from her. The other military personnel, I shrugged. If they can hold a rifle, Kapoor can work with them. He'll probably recycle most of them. I meant that most of the new people would fail to meet the exacting standards of the star team. But we won't lose anything by trying. It occurred to me that I needed to speak with Kapoor. With our personnel shortage so critical, he might need to consider relaxing his standards to fill billets. Or maybe we could create two tiers for combat personnel. Cavalry and stars. Not every soldier needed to be or could be qualified as a special operator. Shit. Our situation was bad and getting worse. Without a full complement of pilots and special operations troops, our options for hitting the Maxolks were limited to whatever the mighty Valkyrie could do on her own. I did not like that. 